Welcome back to Between the Lines, the channel where we analyze poetry. This video is a part of a series in which I break down all 20 CSEC English B poems. Today, we're going to analyze My Parents by Stephen Spender. We see in this short poem a speaker who reflects on an aspect of his childhood. Particularly, he recalls how his parents kept him away from the rough, tough street kids. This boy might have been the rich kid on the block the one who went to prep school and whose shoes were always shiny. The speaker remembers those street kids as being like wild animals. They roughed him up and teased him, but maybe he really longed to fit in with them, to be accepted. Identity, classism, the struggle for social acceptance might be themes that we explore in this poem. Also, why does the title focus on the speaker's parents? Let's get into it, in between the lines. First, let's read the poem. My parents. My parents kept me from children who were rough, who threw words like stones and wore torn clothes. Their thighs showed through rags they ran in the street and climbed cliffs and stripped by the country streams. I feared more than tigers, their muscles like iron, their jerking hands and their knees tight on my arms. I feared the salt coarse pointing of those boys who copied my lisp behind me on the road. They were lithe, they sprang out behind hedges, like dogs to bark at my world. They threw mud while I looked the other way, pretending to smile. I longed to forgive them, but they never smiled. Look at the title compared to the content of the poem. This doesn't seem to be a poem about the speaker's parents, so why is it titled My Parents? Maybe the poem was written without a title and then people just started to call it by its first two words. This used to happen a lot back in the day. Anyhow, that answer is boring, so let's speculate something else. It could be that the speaker sees his parents as being responsible for what happens in the poem. This all happened because of them. Another possibility is that the poem itself is a message to his parents. It is addressed to his parents. We'll come back around to the title later on. Line 1. My parents kept me from children who were rough. Here we see what might be overprotective parents keeping their child away from the ruffians on the streets. We see here a divide, a difference, between the speaker and the children who were rough. Obviously, the speaker was not one of those rough kids. He was perhaps polished and posh. His parents didn't want him to get mixed up with the rough children who were perhaps running up and down on the streets in dirty clothes cussing loudly on the road, getting into trouble, and so on. Here, rough might mean unsophisticated, probably even uneducated, lower class. At least that is what the speaker's parents must have thought of the street kids. In the speaker's eyes, the roughness might have been something he longed to have for himself. He wanted to be rough too. He wanted to jump fences, climb trees, somersault, fight. To a little boy, being rough is actually pretty amazing. So remember, the speaker here is reflecting on his childhood experience. Note that he didn't say directly that his parents protected him from rough children. He says that his parents kept him from rough children, which might suggest that he wanted to be with the rough children. When you keep someone from something, it is usually against their will. So we have a little boy who probably wants to go play outside with the other boys his age. But his parents are preventing him from mingling with those boys. Look at the next line. These rough children threw words like stones. Here we have a very effective simile, and one that could have several meanings. First, the simile is connected with the previous description of the boys. They are rough. Boys who are rough tend to be coarse, harsh, loud with their words. If a stone is thrown at you and it hits you, you're going to feel some pain. Similarly, these rough boys probably hurt the speaker with their words. They might have bullied him verbally. But there are other possible meanings to the simile. For example, when a person throws a stone, the stone doesn't care about anything. It will hit whatever is in its way. It could be a window, a car, a tree, a dog, or a person. Similarly, the boys might display this kind of indiscriminate freedom with their words. They can say whatever they want as loudly as they want, to whomever they want. Meanwhile, the speaker's parents might have set rules for him. You shouldn't say this, you shouldn't say that. Speak properly. 
he wasn't allowed to just throw words around like stones. We see also that the rough children wore torn clothes. You can imagine little kids romping outside in the dirt, in the grass. Their clothes are torn and dirty, and they don't care. They're just focused on having fun. The torn clothes could also indicate that these children were poor. And so there might be a socioeconomic difference between the speaker and these children. He was polished while they were rough. They threw words like stones while he didn't. They wore torn clothes while he wore nice clothes. As we continue reading, we'll see many comparisons, many contrasts between the speaker and the street children. In the next line, we get more imagery of how these little rascals are dressed. Because their clothes are torn, their thighs show through rags. The rags here are the torn clothes. These children would run in the streets, as we see in line 3. They were free to roam the streets and run about. In the next line, we see that these children climbed cliffs and stripped by the country streams. They could roam nature, go to the streams, the rivers. They could bathe and play in the stream. So far, it seems like the speaker is jealous of these three kids. They can do all these fun things, but he cannot. Because his parents kept him away from that kind of life, perhaps to protect him. But a young boy doesn't want to be protected, he wants to be free. He wants to play with other children his age. Before we jump to stanza 2, let's look at stanza 1 as a whole. First, we see a lot of imagery that describes the condition and activities of the rough children. We see rough, torn clothes, their thighs showed through their rags. What is the speaker's attitude toward the rough children? Is it one of contempt and condescension? Does he look down on them? Maybe. He calls them rough in line 1. He says their clothes are torn and their thighs are showing. But remember the poem's title. My parents. I think the boy's parents think that the street kids are hooligans, ruffians, imbeciles. His parents are trying to tell him that he's different from them, better than them. And the speaker at this time is just a young boy. Whatever views he has at the time must have been taught to him by his parents. We see that this boy, who is clearly more well-off than the street kids, actually respects them. He admires how free and wild and happy they are. He wants that freedom and happiness for himself. He wants to be with them. He wants to be like them. He wants to be accepted by them. But his parents are getting in the way. Look at line 4. And climbed cliffs. The speaker sees these street children as brave, as heroes, warriors. It takes strength and courage to climb cliffs. We hear the strength in this activity in the alliteration. Listen to the repeated k sound in climb cliffs. We also see more alliteration earlier on in their thighs showed through rags. They ran in the street. Let's go to the next stanza. I feared more than tigers, their muscles like iron. Wow. These street kids were like gods to the speaker. They were like titans, like Hercules. He saw them as being more powerful even than tigers. We have another simile as the speaker says their muscles were like iron. This highlights how muscular and strong the children were. In comparison, the speaker was probably not as muscular. All he was allowed to do, I imagine, was do his homework, watch TV, and probably play chess and practice piano or something. But we have a very indicative word in this line, feared. Was the boy afraid of these children? Maybe, after all, they were rough and tough and wild, and their muscles were like iron. But fear can also be a deep reverence and respect, one that makes you shiver and sweat. When God says we should fear him, that's what he means. And maybe this is what the speaker means. Probably he was so captivated by them, he was so impressed by them, that he feared them. In the next line, things get physical. We see that these children have their knees tight on his arms. And their hands are said to be jerking. So these wild children, perhaps a group of boys, are either fighting or playing roughly with the speaker. I think this line suggests that they're actually bullying him. Either that, 
or their kind of playing was so rough that it felt like bullying to the speaker. Their knees are tight on his arms, so they might be pinning him down to the ground. It could be some kind of wrestling match. We see the repeated I feared for emphasis as we go to the next line. What else did the speaker fear? He feared the salt coarse pointing of those boys who copied his lisp. The lisp here refers to a speech impediment. So the boys on the road behind him are teasing him, jeering him. Also, they're pointing at him. Look at how the pointing is described. Salt, coarse. Do you know what it means to rub salt in someone's wounds? It means to make a difficult situation even worse for them. So the speaker is suffering from a lisp, a speech impediment, and the street kids are making fun of him. They're making things worse. The salt could also refer to how sweaty the children are. Remember, they're out in the streets running, playing hard. Sweat is salty. What about coarse? Well, this has the same sort of meaning as rough in line one. But here, it also means insensitive. The children were not concerned with the speaker's feelings. They were coarse toward him. Before we move on to the next stanza, let's think about why these rough kids are so mean to the speaker. Are they just kids being kids? I think they're picking on him because he's different from them. He is the rich kid, the posh kid. Maybe they are picking on him as a defense mechanism. They might be jealous of what he has. They may think that he thinks that he's better than them. Look at the last line of the stanza. The street kids are behind the speaker on the road. This could be a metaphor. The road here means life. The speaker is ahead of these children because he comes from a family that is well off. These children are behind him on the road. They are behind him on money. Behind him on education, maybe. They are probably behind him on parents. The speaker has both parents, as we can assume from the title of the poem. But maybe some of these children behind him are not so fortunate. Okay, let's jump to the last stanza. The rough children here were lithe. Lithe here has two applicable meanings. The first one is slim. Not as in skinny, but as in lean, fit. These rough kids weren't fat and slow. They were slim and athletic. Lithe also means agile. They could move quickly. They could run and jump and climb with ease like little monkeys. What did these lithe boys do? They sprang out from behind hedges like dogs and barked at the speaker's world. So we see a simile as the boys are compared to dogs. Is this in a demeaning way? I don't think so. Just like the reference to tigers in stanza 2, I think the comparison to dogs here just means the boys are rough and fast like animals. So the boys would spring out from behind hedges, from behind bushes, and startle the speaker. This is a common behavior for boys, and one that I wouldn't consider to be bullying. These boys barked at the speaker's world. This is a metaphor with several possible meanings. Dogs tend to bark at things they want, at things they can't reach, at things they're interested in. These poor boys, as mentioned before, were likely jealous of the speaker. They wanted his world, his nice house, the fancy meals, the plenty of lunch money, the nice clothes. But it's ironic because the speaker wants the rough boy's world. He wants to be as free and relaxed as they are. The barking here might also mean rough language. Remember, they tease and mock him because of his lisp. Barking can be used to describe rough harsh language. Or it could just be that the boys would jump out from the bushes and shout to frighten the speaker, just to scare him for a laugh. The speaker would be so frightened by this that his whole world would shake. What else did these rough boys do? They threw mud. They probably threw mud at the speaker. They also probably threw mud at one another. And how did the speaker respond? He looked the other way and pretended to smile. He wanted so badly to fit in, to be accepted, that he tried to ignore the bullying, the rough treatment. Looking the other way means ignoring something. Why did he pretend to smile? Of course he didn't want to cry and look like a little crybaby. Instead, he wanted the boys to accept him, to respect him, to play with him. At the end, we see that the speaker longed to forgive these boys. Why would he long to forgive them if they were bullying him? Because he wanted more than anything to be a part of the group. He wanted to strip down and climb cliffs and run in the streets and throw stones and do all these fun activities. 
with the other boys. But why didn't he forgive these boys in the end? Because they never smiled. What does that mean? Maybe it means they never accepted him, after all. They actually never tried to be his friend. But you know what? I have another idea for the last line. What if the them in the line is actually referring to the speaker's parents? As you look at the poem, you will see that even with the bullying, the speaker never actually showed any resentment toward the other kids. Only admiration. He wanted to be with them and be like them. He was never angry at them. He never looked down at them. I think the speaker resents his parents for preventing him from being friends with the other children. He didn't want to be sheltered. He didn't want to be kept away from the other kids. He wanted to be free like them. I think in the last line, the speaker longed to forgive his parents. And this gives us a full circle connection to the poem's title. The boy's upbringing caused him to miss out on a fun childhood, to miss out on having lots of friends, on going to the river, climbing cliffs, playing in the streets, all these fun things. As we wrap up, let's recall some themes that came out in this poem. We see social isolation on the part of the speaker. He longed to be accepted by the other children. We see how socialization, how one's upbringing can affect how they are able to form relationships with others. Because of how the speaker's parents raised him, he had a difficult time making friends. We also see how life can be different for people of different classes. We have an upper or middle class boy living a sheltered life, and we have lower class, even impoverished children living a wild life. We also see desire versus reality. The street kids want but cannot have the speaker's life. The speaker wants but cannot have the life of the rough boys. There are other themes as well, but I think we have done a good job on this point. See you in the next analysis.